welcome to episode 246 of Checkpoint Chat. My name is Alessandro Barbosa. I'm joined by Matthew Figuera. No smirks today. I'm too tired. <laughs> no, no smoke. Oh, no smirks. I thought you said no smokes. <laughs> no smokes. It's like, when did you take up smoking? We're talking uh, Carter Strike calls now. The, the, um, the terrible weather in London's got you down that bad that you just had to pick up a pack from your corner store. We, oh, well. No. <laughs> no, 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 no one smokes in London. Everyone vapes, though. No, I'm, actually, that's a lie. I've seen. I was about fair, to say, I was there not yeah. long ago, and there was a definite mix of. But I think maybe, isn't it that less people smoke because, like, cigarettes are, like, stupidly expensive? There? I think so. Like, Sin, even for Sin, locals, yeah. Yeah, syntax, I think, is very high. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, we've, I've probably mentioned before, but alcohol on the side is. Yeah. <sighs> It's very hectic, expensive. yeah. I was not very expecting expensive. a pint of beer to be eight pounds. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know where you pay eight that. pounds, but the, that is a very expensive pint of beer. You, you typically would pay five, maybe six, depending Even on where you go. Even that's excessive. It is. The, the cheapest I've seen, some, some pubs have a like 12 to 4 p.m., four, four pound special. And all I can think is who's going to the pub between 12 and 4 <laughs> quite literally what i was gonna ask at 12 like lunchtime a little, little lunchtime beer that's fine but just who's, go out who's for knocking a, off at um a cheeky <laughs> pint at 12 o'clock for lunchtime you know hmm. with nando's <laughs> with some nando's nando's expensive we, yeah it's I'm, it's pretty I'm sure bizarre. you could buy a beer at the nando's there surely probably it's it's weird because it's more like a restaurant isn't it it's funny because I think it it looks like a restaurant. It's treated like a restaurant, but honestly, it looks exactly like Nando's back in South Africa. Yeah. So it's this weird, I don't want to just say a mindfuck, because you look at it and you think, this is way too fancy for what it is. <laughs> have you have you been to one yet? No, like, not have you? No, okay. Nando's is expensive. It's a chicken burger combo. I mean, what would you pay in South Africa? Like, uh, 80, or like a chicken burger and chips yeah. no no More. not even that's like still 60 something bucks oh yeah. really okay yeah I'm, I'm sure it's between 9 and 11 pounds <laughs> whoa, that's whoa, 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 whoa whoa that's like 250 rand for a chicken burger and chips no mm. no thank you not today so cheeky nandos can, you, you can say keep cheeky your nandos, cheek oh yeah that's what they mean <laughs> the, yeah. the prices are cheeky yeah um, very cheeky I mean that that's high for I I had some pretty great meals there that were around like 10 pounds. So I can't imagine going to Nando's for more than that. Like that's nuts. Yeah. And, and if this is you in South Africa, no disrespect, don't get me wrong. But for me, it's, it's just foreign seeing, you know, entire families sat at Nando's like restaurants because I never mm. treated Nando's like that. It's so just, to me, it was a really nice takeout place. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Buildings, the interiors look really nice, but I can't say I've ever really eaten at a Nando's. Yeah, though, it's treated 100% like a, but I don't know, it feels, you'd never get a takeout Nando's. You have to go sit there <laughs> and enjoy, yeah. enjoy, you know, lap up the atmosphere, the, the Portuguese South Africanness. <laughs> Read the history on the wall about how the spices made their way through. Oh, across, yeah, across the great oceans. Not sure how much of that is accurate. <laughs> it's you actually know, you never true, know. but yeah. it, sells, it sells you the dream of having a 9 to 11 pound Portuguese chicken meal or burger meal. Listen, it's probably some of the only chicken with uh, decent seasoning on it that you'll find in England. So Maybe. I don't know. We, we've, we've, we've had such good meals here. Uh, I mean, again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but people who say the food in England is bland have clearly eaten only at British places. Because I imagine... No, but that's exactly the thing. They've eaten British food. Only British I think, food. Like, yeah. but even, even then, I can't comment. We, we still need to go do a, a Sunday pub lunch, for example, which Lens, because when a colleague was explaining to her this week is a very winter thing you cannot do that in summer oh, oh really so we Why? have to how do come it. how come I, I don't know it must be a, a seasonal thing of you know you go to your pub it's cold you go for a nice hearty warm meal um hmm. so Interesting. we need to do that and then i can't imagine 
roast beef and Yorkshire pudding and all that being bad. Mm, Yorkshire but, pudding always looks really good. But actual food that we've had, I, we've never had a bad meal. Honest to God. It's been, we've been here, what, like seven months now, just about. Mm. So You've just found the good places that serve the not traditional British stuff. <laughs> well, to be fair, when we, I was there with you, I don't think I ate just, a, yeah. a typical British We ate at non-British meal, you know places, I mean? disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we had, um, well, we went to like a market, which was good. And then we had Indian food, which was really good. And oh, then the, we had like the Middle Indian Eastern food, yeah, breakfast. Is yeah. next level. Honestly, yeah. it's, it's really, really good. We that have, place we went to was one of the most chaotic restaurant experiences <laughs> I've ever had, but also one of the best. So 100% it's worth it. so good, yeah. And we've got... We we know a couple place a couple Indian places and all of them are just really really fantastic. So mm. if you come visit, we'll have to go try some more of them. No, I, I I can't take your opinion seriously until you've eaten fish and mushy peas in a in a. I actually still need to. The pro- the problem with that, um, you, apparently you get um, vegetarian fish and chips because Lensk is vegetarian, and what? we've. No, I, I'm I'm sure it's just like a a grilled something, you know, a vegetarian. A really big piece of fried <laughs> tofu. Maybe I mean, uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently that's the thing. We we haven't seen that near us yet, but the moment we do, we will do a fish and chips. And even even then, I, I saw we were walking through a neighboring area last week, just exploring, and there was a fish and chip shop. And I was like, how much is a fish and chips here? And it, that that particular place looked like a little corner store, unassuming. Between nine and fifteen pounds for a fish and chips. Jewel. <laughs> Jewel. It's like a large fish and chips, ten pounds, extra large, fifteen pounds. It's like oh, that that fish that must, fish be, the must size be huge of the ocean. To be it's like they just they just whack down the whole cod on your plate. There, yeah, like just right there. Yeah, I guess so, you could technically uh, classify that as like your your annual uh, bacalhau meal because it is they, they mostly use cod. I think for the fried fish, they're not hake. So oh, yeah. um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is a much better decision. Much better, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Cod is a much better fish. But you know, I ate a lot of fish and chips in Cape Town. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. But there is like, I mean, we got a. We went to this little deli that we've always seen, but never been to. It's just across the road from the spa and Sea Points, and it's like the seafood deli. So it's like you can go there and get like whatever fish you want and cook it at home, whatever. But mm-hmm. then they have a little like. Um, stand where you can buy like fried fish and chips and Sean, you know, like, Oh, let's just, you know, give it a go. Mm. And I think she got, she got fish and chips. It was like 90, no, it's like 70 bucks or something. I got calamari and chips (laughs) and it was like 120. And I swear to God, that was a meal for four people. We opened it up (laughs) and I was like, this is obscene. There was like three pieces of fish and like a mountain of chips. And I was just like, this, we can't finish this. Like it's, it's not, it's irresponsible to finish this amount of food in one sitting. Like, um, straight to jail. Why are you here? Yeah. And all that costs like you 200 Miriam? bucks. Why are you here? I ate an entire fish. <laughs> I ate three pieces uh, of fish and chips oh, in one oh, sitting. Don't mess with this guy. <laughs> yeah, this, this, guy, this guy's seen shit. You don't want to mess with him. No. What, what um, breaks my heart the most is that that's, that's a whole five pounds. On that whole, I, know. I mean, it 120 was, uh, rand eight ain't necessarily cheap for a. I mean, it's not expensive before what, mm. what you got, but it's for a little no, the, kiosk that you got a fish and chips from. You're like, Ooh, that, no, that, that that was cheap. I mean, even for Cape Town standards, that was relatively that was cheap. That's cheap, why I had yeah. very low expectations because I was like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be pretty average. Because like, we, the, another place we love is the Chapman's Peak Hotel. It's like a hotel that's been there for like. I think over a hundred years or something, just as you're about to enter. It's always at Chapman's its peak. peak. Mm. <sighs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Um, and they're like always busy, but we go there maybe once a year or whatever. And they have like, they, they're predominantly known for their fish and their calamari, but their calamari and chips is 250 rand a portion. So it's like, they are catering to the not locals. Uh, but it is very good and it is a nice treat. Eleven pounds. It's nice and affordable. 
I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you Wait. can come here and think that. Oh, no. No, that, that's expensive. No, don't worry. It still hurts here. Like, oh, my God. Just <laughs> don't, don't convert this. We, we just yesterday, actually, Friday, there's a place downstairs from us that has a lunch special, which we have seen for months. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a burger, chips, and Coke for six pounds, which, sure. again, it's South African expensive. Okay, That's but, almost yeah. like that uh, five pound deal at the supermarkets that you always three, get. Three pound fifty at the mass supermarket. You, oh, three pound fifty. You've got to stop sorry. going to the MS. MS is a ripoff. <laughs> But yeah, so six pounds is actually it's like stupidly cheap. Yeah, that that is very cheap for food here, for takeout food here. Yeah, um, I mean compared to like I said, a ten to twelve pound Nando's, it's almost half the price. Um, yeah. and it's been there for months, and we just have not gotten around to trying it until yesterday. And let me tell you, it was really good. But the reason I thought of that is because you said you ex- you expect it for the price, something disappointing. And to be honest, I was like ah, six pounds. It, what's wrong with this food so something's gonna yeah it's gonna be just not it's gonna be exactly worth its price that and burger pay is gonna taste wrong <laughs> it like. is actually I, i'll go back it's great and it's just downstairs perfect what more do you want it's not to bad have? for six pounds not bad at all mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. worth it you know you know what else is six times ten pounds we could have segued a long time ago with the card but I you know. just you just let it I slip know. you by I know. I let it swim off into the distance. Oh, you let it sleep with the fishes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Video games. I think they cost sixty pounds. I actually don't know. Um, wow, well, they, they cost seventy. They used to cost sixty. Now they've gone up. Inflation. Hey, sure. Oh. So wait, they were sixty pounds while they were sixty dollars in the states. I, I don't actually know what a new AAA game is here. I, I, I think York. it's forty to fifty pounds. Look how Maybe. detached Matthew is from the common man. It's just like no, I don't because, buy video games. No, because no, that's not it at all. It's because I've still got all my stores <laughs> set to South Africa where possible. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to buy AAA games at launch. Never oh, couldn't no. be me. Please, in pounds, <laughs> never rands. Maybe <laughs> I do know that the the Prince of Persia game that you you love that we spoke about last week. That game is fifty dollars, and like at first. At first, it. like if I hadn't played it, I'd be like, "Oof, that's pretty high." Like for what it looks like, but mm. you know, considering it's like twenty hours, it's a phenomenal Metroidvania. It's like, yeah, I pay that for Worth Hollow Knight, so yeah. And Hollow Knight's what, like ten, ten dollars, something ludicrous. No, I think it was like twenty, thirty, wasn't it? I don't know. No, maybe when we bought it, it was ten. Yeah, maybe it doesn't sell, but it was a stupidly cheap game. What if Silk Song comes out for sixty dollars? I'll pay it. Uh, yeah, I'll no, buy it. No I'll buy it on the spot. question about that. I'll, I'll buy pay. Two. <laughs> I'll buy it <laughs> straight up. Uh, but yeah, v- video games. Um, video games. What do you want to start are, with? Uh, so <clears throat> let's just let's just chat about uh, some Avatar real quick because uh, this is a game that I played like briefly in December when it did come out and then we went on break and I was like not around my consoles for like two and a half weeks. It's abandoned. And then I played a bit more in January. Um, so just go, I haven't finished this game. I don't know if I will, uh, to be entirely honest, uh, because I think that this is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this game is really, really good at making you feel like you're embodying a Navi. Hmm. Um, I think it's really good at making you feel like you are exploring a lush and like really gorgeous um, Pandora hmm. um, and making it feel like you are being intersected in the ongoing story that the films are, you know, continuing over time. The story hmm. takes place, I think, in sort of parallel with the second film. Like it starts off with the events of the first film and the fallout of like that war and then you being put to sleep um, and only being woken up when the humans come back to Pandora. And then like you are kind of dealing with a certain part of the, the human expedition here while Jake Sully is running away from them and making friends with whales. Um <laughs> So I have not seen Avatar 2. I should probably... Oh, haven't it. you? Okay. No. There's about an hour of them just making friends with whales. It's kind of <laughs> insane. Um, 
Correct. So I, I think all of that around the edges is really fun. It's really, really beautiful. <coughs> like, I, I think by now you would have seen a lot of people express the same sentiment, um, you know, the likes of Digital Foundry and them. Mm. They've done a lot of deep dives into how impressive this game is visually from a jungle density standpoint and mm. detail standpoint. And this is like one of the rare examples of a next gen, you know, TM mm. game from last year <laughs> um, alongside the likes of like Alan Wake. It really does look yeah. spectacular. I just think that actually playing it is no, nowhere near as interesting or exciting. It is fundamentally a, it is a, it, to be reductive, it's like a far cry for sure. Mm. Like in its structure, you've got this open world, um, you've got <laughs> little missions towers. that you can put, partake in. You, are, you uncover the map um by you know inspecting certain areas um you've got weapon upgrade trees you've got um like a pouch for healing items that you can craft um mm. and you kind of just you know you're choosing between like stealth and all out assault uh, paths with your gameplay and the game mm. kind of like blends those two together quite nicely so if you played a far cry 6 or far cry 5 the structure of this thing is very very familiar it is different in some ways where like you've got you've got certain small mechanics that differentiate it like when you're gathering resources from plants you can you can play this like mini game where you i don't even recall what what they say but you like harmonize with the plant so that you don't damage it um mm. and prevent it from producing that same resource again over time but you get less resources or more resources something like that um you've also got this like energy bar that is separate to your um health meter and that isn't just like a sprint bar it is a bar that goes down gradually as you use things like sprinting or jumping or whatever and then you have to okay. consume food to replenish it it doesn't just come back Okay. Um, it doesn't mean you can't sprint when it's empty. It just means you are less effective with more agile movements, okay. um, which can be a problem if you're like in combat, for instance. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, oh, I do like that it is a bit more restrained in terms of what it shows you on the map. Uh, okay. It does make it feel like you are exploring this area more rather than just following a waypoint. Like you can definitely... Yeah. You can definitely have a setting that just puts a quest marker on there, but there is like an exploration mode that it kind of forces you to to like read quest logs and hints to figure out mm. where to go. So very early on, I had to find a person who was near this like human base I was at. And they said, oh, they had set up camp at a waterfall just at the east of the base. And like I was given a sort of like, marker to follow to get to that general area but then i had to use uh, those hints to actually, to actually yeah. pinpoint where they were okay. um, and that's kind of neat i think that's it's a good intersection of the two um so it makes the exploration feel a bit more organic but i think going full legend of zelda here would be almost impossible because oh, of yeah. just how dense this uh this forest is um, yeah another another part that i actually genuinely like is where while playing as the Navi, you feel like a Navi. So you, you're you playing as a native to Pandora, mm. um, where in the, you know, in events parallel to the first film, you were taken as, you and a few others were taken as uh, kids from your tribe that were, I think, killed. Um, sure. And then the humans tried to basically brainwash and indo indoctrinate you into, like, supporting their cause. Yeah. And surprise surprise uh a bunch of other humans Get were like out. this is this is fucked up this is real so they put you to sleep while everyone was evacuating because the humans wanted to kill you at that point and then when they came back they revived you and were like we are now this like human slash navi resistance to the new human expedition force coming back okay. um but that does mean that you are you know through and through a navi and that comes with like certain perks in terms of your perspective on this world. So like humans look tiny, which is kind of fun. Um, <laughs> I was wondering they that. are they are quite literally maybe up to your waistline, which is really Amazing. really fun. Uh, the very first part of the game is probably the most visually uninteresting, but most mechanically like um, revealing because you are trying to escape this human base, but everything is designed for humans. So you have to literally crouch hilarious. to get through a door 
and like when you're trying to get through vents you have to like prone to get through them and like everything's too small for you you know so they it makes it very evident that you are this much bigger creature operating in a small space but then once you're in pandora like pandora is so much more geared towards the way you Amazing. move around like the way you can sprint and leap onto cliffs is very nice and fluid you've got these little mm -hmm. plants that act as like zip lines to get you up to places um you eventually get access to your oh what is the name i think it's an ekron the yeah. little flying thing so okay. then you can fly places mm -hmm. it's it's cool like it makes it is it delivers on the um the like promise of playing as a navi um mm. i just think uh, I, you know I, I i think the structure of like it feeling like a fallout is so such a disservice to the, all the other work that's been done around it to make it feel not yeah. like that but i also don't know how they would avoid that because like ultimately these games or these movies are action movies where mm. you know it is like a lot of bow and arrow or gun warfare so it's like how yeah. do you not make that feel like something you've created before so yeah yeah <clears throat> i think it's i don't think it's a bad game i think it's i think it's neat i think it's interesting especially if you're a huge fan of this franchise i think you'll have a mm. very good time yeah um i just yeah I, I i've kind of like i've seen the mechanisms around and i've seen what there is to offer and i'm just like i think i'm good i've had my time with it and it was yeah. fun i just have no real desire to play 20 30 hours of this, of this um, yeah i wish yeah. i completely get that i mean even from our side i've had access to this game i've not picked it up because i've looked at it and thought shit I, i'm genuinely surprised by how visually beautiful it is um mm. but i i just think and you're right it is maybe a disservice to be like oh it's a ubisoft by the numbers game which you think well what could they have done otherwise like it's the movies lend themselves to the structure um, mm, mm. but yeah i just can't see myself committing personally when i've got so much other stuff i want to play that said I, I completely agree with you i think we are a huge uh fan of this franchise i mean what more do you want it looks mm. like it's it is a playground which is a good thing um and again it just i think I, i'm just genuinely surprised by how good it looks because this game has also been one of those that just quietly it's been in development then it kind of mm. just disappeared and then it's back and i also think the release time was a bit strange um, which i i can't tell you why i mean what's wrong with december it just feels like it's the end of the year and it kind of mm. got forgotten a bit as everyone is you know sort of just dealing with the festive season and maybe you know it came out post game of the year i think so it, i don't know it's just a weird release period and i think it might have slipped on a lot of people's radars from like from the get-go so yeah i think they got a bit screwed with that though because the initial idea as far as i remember was for this to launch alongside the film which yes. you know makes which sense in context with now. this yeah yeah it, like it makes sense in context like that this is a story running parallel to the events of that film so yeah. i think it was just a case of like we need to get this thing out there because we're like two three months away from you know financial year end mm. you know business decisions whatever and it's just like well december makes the only sense because january is prince of persia and mm. what february was meant to be skull and bones but even that got pushed back so it's yeah. like yeah it, it, it was weird because you're right things that launch in like the second week of december you're leaving it out to die there unless it is truly exceptional and even then then people are like damn i wish more people would have played this when it launched at a better time mm. you know so yeah but it shows i mean both of us were on holiday like yeah, a that's, few days just, after this came out so that, that's exactly it. Yeah. i think if it had come out at any other period maybe i would have tried it out but the fact that i was on holiday came back and i've just picked up straight in 2024 with prince of persia and we'll get to it the mm. last of us remastered it's just like well i don't know where yeah where do you find I'm time for this, this now yeah. yeah yeah no so, yeah. but yeah it's uh it's an it, it it's put it i think it's a lot better than what I was expecting at least, um, so, but given, you know, the, the developer behind it, Ubisoft massive and, you know, the engine behind it, like, yeah, it makes sense that it's pretty good. Mm. And I suspect they will probably build on this. Like I don't see oh, this as sure. a one, one soft thing. Yeah. Maybe they'll get the release of a sequel down in time for Avatar 3, which is coming out. Well, I mean, they've got lots of time because, you know, yeah. Avatar 3 will take another 20 years to come out. So. <laughs> Listen, Ubisoft, start developing it now. 
and then just push push the green button the moment James Cameron's like, yes, Avatar 3. Be, <laughs> be ready for launch on PlayStation 8. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's so far. Um, well, it's also just to be fair, to, I, I don't know. The game looks, again, looks better than I thought it would be. I don't know what I expected mm. from an Avatar game. Um, so yeah. I was very interested when they announced it as first person. That was like the biggest yeah, like, oh. That's I also thought it would have been a fascinating. third person. Yeah, nice. but it, it kind of works. Though. Like the 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 parkour and platforming works in a way that, again, better than expected. So yeah. yeah, feeling like a little blue dude is good. And if that's what you want from your avatar game, then yeah, I think you're going to be stoked. You're going to be good. Cool. Um, shall we talk about the next thing we've, both dabbled with uh the last of us part two remastered um so here's a quick quiz how how long ago did the last of us two come out matthew three years ago yeah right yeah. was it well oh, yes yeah give me my prize <laughs> <laughs> three years ago um i think what is dominated at least when this was announced like the conversation here was why is a three-year-old game being remastered? Especially within the context of like this game got a PlayStation 5 patch. So it's not a native PS5 game, but like you can play it at 60 FPS on the PS5, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like why does this exist? And I think the answer I've come to is that this game visually there are such minor improvements that I would think that you would only really notice them scrutinizing the same image side by side mm. or the same video feed side by side. So it's not an immediate like upgrade in terms of like visual fidelity or fluidity. Yeah, you've got the game running at 4K now instead of 1440p for its quality mode, but like mm. the performance mode still runs at the same resolution at yeah. the same frame rate. I think this game is predominantly almost like a game of the year edition where it's like, yeah. here's the original game and here's all this extra stuff mm. that we, you know, kind of wanted to explore with the game, but didn't have the chance to at launch. And I think yeah. that's where a lot of the value of this, this mm. lies. So you've played a bunch of the roguelite mode. What do you, what, what's it called? I forgot what it's actually uh, called. Um, no way. Home. No return. Spider-Man. No way. <laughs> and I think no return's not far off from another Spider Man. Um, it's something like that. Uh, it's I don't know. Like it's a roguelite yeah. mode. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, j- just to quickly bounce off what you said, uh, I think right out the gate, it's smarter them to make it a, what is it, a $10 upgrade if you own the yeah, last of Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Because if you look at it from that point of view, you go, oh, you know, visually they've maybe done a little bit of a polish, but it would be an absolute crime reselling this at $60. Um, so I think yeah. good on Naughty well, Dog. Well, they are technically oh, to no, people who don't have who it. Who don't so have it, yeah. But I mean, yeah. if you've got it. Uh, uh, to not offer an to, upgrade path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To not, sorry, okay. to not offer an upgrade path would be, because I mean, Sony have done stuff like that in the past where there's just straight up mm-hmm. no way to, to upgrade. If you own a copy on PS3 or PS4, whatever, sorry for you, you've got to rebuy the game. So thank you, Sony. That is a step in the right direction. Um, mm. As for, maybe it should have been a free upgrade. I don't know, debatable. As for the Yeah, actual- very, very interesting <laughs> thing that I've been thinking about in the context of like God of War got a roguelite mode yeah. update in it's, December for free. And it's, it's like- It's wild mm. the timing because- I've seen so many people just all over Twitter this week talking about, well, yeah, you know, left behind uh, mode is fun, but uh, God of War was free. And it's, you know, debatably yeah. better in some regards. It's just so, a, a strange position for Sony to put themselves in. You know what I mean? Did, like, did why they not just, just standardize between the two? Surely one person looked at this and went, huh. <laughs> we should we should probably discuss this i don't know maybe make yeah. them both free or make them both ten dollars because even the the god of all one i've seen so many people go wow can't believe sony made this free this is this exactly. i would have paid for this and then and it's actually more like fundamental to the story of god of war it's like an epilogue of sorts to that game so it is more of like like i'm not going to say the the last of us roguelite is a throwaway mode but it's not 
expanding the story. It is a just a fun like, like arcade way to engage with yeah. the existing mechanics there. Whereas God of War is like, no, this is like extending the story of Kratos and you know, it's it's wild that that was free. Uh, just I don't think either of them. I, I'm not saying like, oh, The Last of Us should have been free. I'm saying that God of War should have been ten dollars, like hundred yeah, yeah, percent. It, it be just clear. it shoots it shoots Sony shoots itself in the foot by making that free because mm. they make everything else look you know, everything else now has to be better if it's going to be charged for, <laughs> so to speak. So the words of such a weird us, do not be sorry, be better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've come we've come full circle. Okay, so the actual the le- I think it is called Left Behind. Uh, I don't least- think it is because Left Behind is the DLC the- for the first game. Oh my god! Okay, well, it's called. <laughs> Damn it! What is it called? <laughs> Doesn't I will matter. find it. Hold on. It hold is- on. This is the roguelite mode, um, and in you know as roguelites work, it's a, it's a run based affair where you typically start with no. It's called problems. No Return. You were correct the oh, first time. Oh my god! What did I call it? <laughs> <laughs> no way home. <laughs> no way home. <laughs> Um, it's a roguelite. You start with you, you start with nothing with each run, and then you play through stages. You unlock resources, which you use to buy weapons, uh, give yourself perks, and upgrade said weapons. Um, it's I think the structure on paper it it sounds good, and I think look I've, I haven't put in dozens of hours into this, so people who have might feel otherwise and say you know maybe it gets a bit stale, etc. But I will say that I think this mode lends itself well to The Last of Us purely because The Last of Us does have phenomenal gameplay. It is um, maybe better at stealth than all out action, but I think the, the there is the you know the meat and bones are there to just you know package them as a roguelite. So I think it mm-hmm. does work. But I have seen people say, and I have seen this myself, where. I think it was maybe it was Kotaku that had an article yesterday, just like a you know eleven essential tips for, uh, you know, The Last of Us, No Way Home. <laughs> Damn it, fuck's sake! Um, <laughs> and one of the the the, head, the headers was just basically like, don't treat it like a stealth game, and which is fair because the I think the description there was essentially some of the the modes which we'll get to, like there's different stages with different objectives, etc. But a lot of those, the enemies straight up know where you are. And the last of us mm. two lends it, and even the first game, you always have the option to be stealth. You don't have to go all out. Whereas yeah, it feels a bit like, well, if enemies know where you are from the get-go. What does it help having a bow and sneaking around? Like you have to be proficient with your, I don't know, for example, pistol, your molotovs, etc. So it's interesting from that regard. But... All that said, there are how many playable characters are there? About eight to ten. Sure, there's quite a few. There's, yeah. there's a, there's a they, bunch. They, they, they follow that path of like you play as one character a certain number of times that unlocks a subsequent character, and then yes. that character unlocks another. But character. each each character has a different starting weapon and a different set of perks, so they all sort of feel different. Um, I guess from from the get go, but we. I think the strategy comes in is that with each run, so you if you're looking at the video feed now, you're seeing I'm busy choosing a stage. There's branching paths to choose, and then you can see exactly, you know, what theme level it is. Like the one I did typically was assault, where you just had to survive. Um, well, you, assault, just, assault is one where enemies are introduced into the map, but they don't they don't know where you are. Know where you yeah. are. So yeah, like for example, there's assault, and that is a map mode. And then when you finish it, you'll get typically currency and supplements and what is it like gear parts? I don't know what that resource is called. And then yeah, you use that said money after each level to just buy new weapons. And then what's interesting is that when you go to the weapon store, for example. Um, it's not a fixed thing. It's randomized. So you might, mm. on a run, open up the weapon locker to buy something and then there's a submachine gun. But the next time you play it, there might be the bow and arrow. So that's mm-hmm. where the roguelite aspect comes in of you need to obviously, you know, strategize as you go. Maybe you see, oh, there's a bow and arrow. I'll buy that and then I'll spend time kitting out. Maybe I'll spend resources on, you know, giving myself explosive arrows. So there is that mm. depth. Um, and again, it plays into 
you know which character are you playing if you're playing abby she is very much melee focused mm -hmm. you don't want to be sneaking around with her. you want to be up beating the shit out of people versus mm -hmm. ellie who i think from the onset she's maybe more balanced she starts with a pistol um and molotov she seems more like stealth focused yeah to be it, honest. Seems, um, it seems more stealth yeah. focused and if you're watching the the feed you're like i do have the rifle and a bow and arrow because i thought well maybe it'll be best to pick apart enemies from afar from distance yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um it's I, i'm having a good time with it like i haven't put nearly enough I've, i haven't done nearly enough runs but i can see myself really enjoying this mode and i do want to play more um i don't mm -hmm. know what your thoughts are yeah, I, I think I'm very similar to you in that I think this is a very smart distillation of the game's existing mechanics into a mm. roguelite mode. And I think Kotaku's hint is correct that to a degree that this isn't a stealth game. I would say that it is still a stealth game, but not in the same manner that the story is where you are yeah. doing very careful and slow calculated moves. It's more of a, it reminds me a lot of Metal Gear Solid 5 where it's yes. like, you are being stealthy, but when shit hits the fan, you have to adapt. Mm. And then if you move quickly enough around maps, people lose focus of where you are and you can re-engage mm. in stealth. And you got to do stuff like that. But like you said, there's modes that completely prevent that. Um, mm. I, I'm really blanking on the mode names now, but there's one, like I said, where everyone knows where you are from the get-go. You have to survive a, a certain amount of time, um, but enemies are introduced every, like, 10 seconds so if you aren't actively killing enemies you will soon be completely overrun um by like a swarm of enemies um so you can't just like hide around and they also just know where you are so yeah that mode is kind of, that mode is kind of fun until you play against like infected enemies and there's like five of them around you yeah. and you try and take a a swipe with a weapon at a clicker and it is like absolutely not and it just <laughs> eats you alive in one hit and ends your run and i was like that happened to me twice, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, that's." I don't like bit... this part of that. It's that's a bit aggressive to end a run, you know, on that. Considering yeah. I literally cannot see what's happening around me, and I'm just pressing X to like survive. So yeah, on on that, I mean, this is a, a side note. I remember in the first Last of Us because I've actually played that more recently with the <laughs> the PS5 version, like last year or the year before. That was mm. a thing of you could have. Um, a shiv is like a countermeasure. What am I misremembering? What? No, no, this one has that as well. A, oh, but is that something you can't get in, <clears throat> in this mode? Or is so it just something? It, it, maybe, yeah. I haven't seen it at least, but okay. I know in the, the main story, well, in the first game, it was a uh, consumable resource. The shiv would break. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Here you have your, your knife, which doesn't break. Um, but there is a like you, limitation to how many times you can protect yourself from a clicker, obviously. I yeah. can't recall what that is, though. Um, I think but yeah, like, no, there yeah. is that. I haven't seen that here, though. Okay. Um, at least not yet. Maybe I haven't played it to get that as an upgrade, or yeah, maybe, maybe it's it is particular to a character but or something. Re regardless, yeah. it is a bit <clears throat> shitty that you, you can have the dream run and then a clicker can one-shot you. That, it's, yeah, can yeah. just fucking wreck you from out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, there, there, there's like there's like elements of you know parts of a game that was never designed for a rogue like brushing up against mm. the sort of design but i think as a whole it feels very good and clever and i think it is very well constructed to the idea of playing one or two runs a night because the runs are quite short yeah um and it is all about unlocking things like the more runs you play with the character the more characters you unlock the more mm. times you play with that character and it and do you know specific things according to their traits, the more cosmetics you unlock, um, mm. the more you engage with certain game modes, the more different game modes. You, I mean, I don't know if you've looked at the list of game modes. There are so many, so, done, yeah. so, so many. Um, so I haven't even unlocked half of the ones that can be used in a rotation for a run. So yeah, yeah there, there's loads to do. Yeah. And I think if you really get into it, this is a mode that you can be playing for quite some time. So it's a substantial upgrade. Like yeah. it's a substantial addition to to the overall package. Um there's also I don't know if you've played them, but the they added some cut content to the main campaign, like levels. Oh no, that, not yet. No, I've yeah, read about them. They they're there. They 
they're not like completely polished levels they've been put in as like hey these were the work in progress yes you know versions we had of this we just wanted to put it in there as a means to like show what development is like and provide developer commentary yeah. and i think that's a really that's cool, cool addition yeah. to games like this like mm. more of that i'd appreciate because that's just a very fascinating insight into how mm. things get made and why things get cut and yeah very very cool i think ultimately this is a very worthwhile upgrade for ten dollars. Oh yeah, hundred so, percent. Even yeah. if, honestly, even just if oh, if you're watching Ooh, the video feed, the palms are sweaty in this run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this, this is a tough. It's, oh, there you go. A just tough map to be fighting the the infected on. Yeah. yeah. Um, what were we? Oh sure, yeah, so very for, good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for for a ten dollar upgrade, like I was saying, I think I messaged. Maybe it was in the Discord. Someone was saying. You know, they don't have the emotional capacity to invest in another playthrough of The Last of Us 2. And I kind of agree in that I've played it once mm. and it wasn't that long ago. Like, let's be honest, three three years ago, it wasn't too long ago. I don't know if I have mm. it in me to commit another 30 hours with, you know, I could play at a nice 60 FPS, whatever. Um, I That's don't know. the thing. It's also a very long it's, game. It's a long like, game. It's, it's not it's a like 10 hour experience. Hours. Yeah. It's very yeah. good, albeit a very long game. However, yeah. this roguelite mode, what a perfect way to, you know, if you want to play more of The Last of Us 2 without, that, <laughs> without the emotional trauma, this is the way to play the game. And it's it's quite interesting. I mean, you're watching the, you, I've killed it now, but you're watching the, vid, the video feed. I haven't played this game for three years and I picked it up pretty quickly. Like it's it's just... Yeah, same. It's, it's very, like for comparison, Horizon playing the the dlc last year i was like i can't remember how to play this game mm. <laughs> just mm. too many mechanics this i mean obviously there's death to the last of us but it feels like it is a lot simpler to pick up and just be straight back in it and i've really enjoyed it it's like the encounters i've had were tense like you just saw this thing of sneaking around oh god there's a clicker behind me <laughs> it's it's those and you only moments. had a bone arrow i can't believe you actually made it out of that scenario <laughs> it's those those moments i've i really enjoyed um from the base game so to have them yeah just on you know again this is uh how i'm getting my words mixed up it, it you can play it infinitely i mean i know you're not gonna play it infinitely, yeah but you yeah. can there are lots of different ways to play The Last of Us, which is cool. And I think for ten dollars, mm. that is definitely worth it. Uh, if you've no, don't I, have, I completely agree. If you don't yeah. have The Last of Us Part Two at all, let me tell you, it is definitely worth uh, playing. We, I think we when we played it back, way back when we actually did do a whole spoiler cast at some stage. Um, mm. Play it, really fantastic. That's a game. that's a phenomenal yeah. game. Yeah, I think if if you've picked up a PS5 and just what didn't have a PS4 or never got to this on the PS4, it's well worth mm. um, the investment to that campaign. I think it's a yeah. really, really strong campaign and just some of the best like stealth action gameplay you're going to find um, now because like there's like almost no game doing it like that anymore since Metal Gear Solid isn't a no. thing. So yeah, really good game. Um, yeah. Play it. Cool. Play it. Cool. Play um, game releases. Should we? Oh, game releases. I keep, I wanted to jump straight into news. <laughs> and we do, but we can I forgot skip, that there we are. We can skip game releases if you like. Uh, what is it? No, I, I mean, I think there are some. So, I think. I actually it, don't know. They typically are. If, if last few Let years us have look us here on that there are always ye old things. long release list oh, on games look at me dot bad, com. bad producer i didn't have oh, <laughs> the you news hate window. to see it please hold oh, they actually are quite big games coming out so Damn. there you go um we're looking at games from today uh january 20th until january 26th so yeah it's actually quite a big week uh let's start off with graven coming to pc on january 23rd Howl coming to PlayStation 5 oh. and Xbox on January 23rd. Then Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth coming to PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox, uh, Xbox One even, and PC on January 24th. Darren's right. everywhere. Rejoice. <laughs> Darren's and Jeff's and Umar's 
put your hands up everywhere today. rejoice praise <laughs> um then we've got adventure quest 8-bit dungeons and doom knights there's two words there that are made into one and i do not like that um it's okay, upsetting pc and switch january 25th apollo justice ace attorney trilogy coming to nintendo switch january 25th under Na- oh, wow this is a under title Nights. under night in birth 2 sis colon cells sis cells Cellies? I, I don't know don't know get better be better <laughs> do not be sorry be better ps5 oh, ps4 switch look. and pc january 25th and then to round out the Good week release for with a roundhouse week. kick a tekken 8 playstation 5 <laughs> xbox series x and s and what PC, are we playing chuck norris simulator yeah, or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> He could be a Tekken character. <laughs> he could, he could fit into that world. Yeah. Just What if King took off his mask and was just Tuck Norris? <laughs> I'd love that. All this oh, time, you go, wow, all these decades. I do love fighting games on PC that get modded. There was a clip going around this week or last where somebody uh, had modded um, Mortal Kombat to be Disney vs. Pixar, Pixar characters. characters. Yeah. He had the old man from Up fighting like Woody, <laughs> Woody. from Toy Story. <laughs> More of that, please. If we can it's get a, a Chuck Norris mod for Mortal Kombat All Tekken, that would be fantastic. Thank you in advance. If if you are looking for the best way to brush up on your Tekken lore, I would recommend diving into the multiple hours uh, Giant Bomb spent ranking every character ending from every game, I think from Tekken 1 all the way up to 7. It, um, how, sorry, how long art. is that? Oh, it's so long. It's like that, three or four videos. Must... It's ridiculously long. <laughs> it's that... but it it is gold. The 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 endings for King are so, so weird. Good. That... Is, the endings for Yoshimitsu so weird. There's like, one. Um, someone at uh, you, good you... Uh, good dates a dude Brian at work mentioned it. Um, it's Nina's ending from like Tekken Six where. Mm-hmm. So I think is it Anna who's her sister slash? Yes, they're constantly like <laughs> trying to kill each other or some bullshit. This, like this, this ending, it's something along the lines of they become movie stars. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep, I know they exactly. Be, they become you're movie about. stars, and then Anna is in the limelight, clearly the favored actress, and then Nina leaves the set and blows it up. It just you. You can't make this up. It's art. It's actual. I art. think they've killed each other multiple times <laughs> across some of the endings, and then there's like this whole subplot of like Nina having like amnesia, like, and it's just the wildest shit ever. And the fact that all of this is considered like actual canon makes it like chef's kiss. It's you you want to get into Tekken canon? This is a, a complete sidebar. But for those of you who don't know, we're gonna we're gonna dive back to Tekken one quick, where the the whole premise is that. Uh, what's the family's name? Hayahachi, Jernia, uh, Kayuza. Oh, I the Mishim- M- M- Mishima clan. I think it's the, the Mishima clan, yeah. I think ha- the the long and the short was that Hayahachi took, it must have been... Yakuza. Uh, oh, uh, Kazuya. I also, also get them mixed up. Kazuya yeah, always. <laughs> took Kazuya up to a cliff as a child and he threw him off because he knew... Wasn't it a volcano? Or a volcano. He threw him off because he knew that if he was truly his son, he would be okay. <laughs> but like, what? what? <laughs> Parenting 101, do not take notes from this man, okay? And then Sp- Shaka, Kazuya becomes evil mm. and Throws his dad Heihachi is like, cliff. shit, I need to find Kazuya's son to fight him. But then oh, at one point, Kazuya throws Heihachi into a volcano. Mm. Take a shot and every then- time somebody's thrown into a volcano. Essentially. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, Kazuya throws Jin into a volcano, his son. And then... And then, <laughs> Hot- and then I think Heihachi throws Jin into a volcano too at some point. It's like, okay, you, beat it, you defeated Kazuya, but now I'm scared of you. And it's just like... And then at one point, and this is canon, okay, don't, don't fight me on it. Kazuya throws Mario into a volcano in Super Smash yeah, Bros. absolutely <laughs> happens. Absolutely happens. <laughs> he throws, if I recall, in that, in that cutscene, he throws a lot of characters into the volcano. Just... Bless, bless him I for forgot that, that he's a Smash character. <laughs> Fuck, it's ridiculous. Good. I, I, I played... think Kazuya is also a Smash character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are they? Yeah. I played Tekken Eight. Um, when was it? The beta. No, no actually at Comic Con here in London, they had it playable. Oh. So I've actually played it. It's, I love Tekken. I'm very excited for Tekken Eight. It looks really cool. Like mm. like beautiful. I 
listen, I don't play fighting games unless they have a cool ass story mode. This might have one. We'll see. Who sees? We'll see if we play. Yeah. yeah. Um, um I think reviews for that are out like really soon. So I know we've got to do predictions Monday. Just remind me. I, I warned you. You did. I warned you. But listen, I've I've Watch, run those, those I've run, reviews are just gonna come out on Monday. I've run this game enough to know. Well, I mean, I've run it for one year, but I've run it enough <laughs> to know that people fatigue if you ask them too much. Even just getting one prediction can be a pain sometimes. So to, oh, well, to, it was painful this week. I mean, <laughs> we asked for predictions. Some people gave ranges, <laughs> and it was just like, the fuck is going on here? Fucking Do Jeff. you not understand and the question? Eighty and ninety. I'm like, that defeats the whole purpose. Okay, well, my prediction yeah. is between seventy and a hundred. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. I predict between zero and one hundred. Oh, there, yeah. Fuck you. Come on. Absolute nonsense. So we'll, we'll, we'll we'll give predictions on Monday. Um, I really want to do that. Um, have you looked into that fantasy? I, I've, fantasy I've looked thing? at it, but for for the same reason of you and I would do it. 100%. It's more work. It's more it's work. More work. Yeah. The moment you ask, unless you you people like you and I who want to commit to of doing it, people aren't going to be interested. Mm. They'll they'll sign up, do it for a week, and then forget it. Exists. Maybe maybe we can do. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe next year, or even still this year, it's still pretty early. If you want to do just a draft of us two, and then. You can, can get that? anyone who's listening can, <coughs> can uh, develop their own draft that links to our one and we play alongside whoever wants to play. So. All right, we can investigate that. T- yeah. TBC, watch this space. TBC, yeah, TBC. <laughs> and for those, um, sorry, this is a complete sidebar. For those wondering what I've done, uh, what I did last year with my team at work is I started a, basically ran a game where the week before game launches, I gather what they think the game will average on Metacritic. Um, so, for example, Tekken 8 is coming out. Alessandro might say, I think it's going to score 85. And I say, I think it's going to do better, score 88. And then if it scores like 89, I get points because I got the closest prediction. Um, and I ran that for a whole year. We predicted 50 plus games last year. And I came Who second. Who won last year? Uh, oh. Another writer, Laura. She beat she me by five points. Okay. That's, that's a, sure. That's quite significant. I mean, I was. The total look. It's a tough game. Okay, the she she ended because <laughs> think about it. Like you 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 guessing random numbers between zero and a hundred. She got thirty, and I got twenty five. So you think in the grand scheme, like thirty is actually not a lot, but it is still a lot. Why are you laughing? No, no, though? that's you what I was saying. She punch. beat you by a lot, and you like went two minutes into ten. She's like, no, actually, it's hard. Okay, I came second difficult. because it's hard. <laughs> It's a, it's a challenging game <laughs> there we go now everyone knows what uh, what i do with my spare time it's very news. funny <laughs> very very fun news yeah um, God. shall we talk about the direct delicious little developer direct so if, if you didn't know the uh, xbox uh, this time last year did a new thing called a develop direct where they essentially mm. just showed off some some games that are coming out for the rest of the year and that's where they shadow dropped half our rush um they, yes, did the, yeah. they did the same thing this year no shadow drop unfortunately i was hoping for one but they did touch on some new first party games coming out this year including the likes of indiana jones hellblade avowed uh era history untold and then mysteriously visions of mana from square enix which was was that the big surprise because i i don't know it seems very left field not not in a bad way um it was it was kind of like um yeah I, I guess it was just one that wasn't on the roster um and so like unexpected but it was also not like a really big thing I is think. it part of game pass or not because it didn't look like it was I, I it didn't they didn't announce it as part of it no. but assume now given that it was there like that's probably in the works i would i, I mean why I else know. would it be there but that was you know my, I mean? my big question where this is a first party hey all of these games made by xbox all of them on game pass also here's a square next game and i was looking at those logos and splash screens at the end and i saw no game pass anyway so i was like this feels, no it was just felt yeah. a bit strangely placed but it's coming to xbox for those uh, fans who love visions of man and want a modern take note on an xbox console of all places i don't know if visions of man has ever been on xbox so there you go uh yeah it's coming to playstation but um 
I, I don't know if like a mana game has been on Xbox before, like Secrets of Mana or something. I, I don't know. I didn't realize that that series spans like 17 games. That's kind of it's, insane. It's um, up there with Final Fantasy and Dragon yeah. Quest. It's like one of those many Square Enix titles that have just been around for it's got the actual heritage. decades. Yeah. Yeah. So outside of um, Visions of Mana, we got like the five games that were... I guess, revealed to be at the show. And those were the five games that were shown at the show. So first up was Obsidian's Avowed, which is the the sort of like Skyrim-ish RPG that was actually announced back when the Series X was first revealed. So this has been a long time coming. And I think the first time we saw gameplay for that was last year. And it looked very different in sort of tone and I would say color. Yeah. Then the reveal trailer suggested, uh, but we got a a greater look at it now. I'm I'm not super sold on it. I won't lie. It's the idea is like this RPG that looks a lot like Skyrim or a Bethesda title, but that mixes both melee and magic combat on like the same uh, plane. So they showed off having like a pistol and a wand, or a sword and a wand in mm. each hand, and using those two things in in uh, combat uh i thought the combat looked a bit like slow and stilted and not mm. that interesting i don't know what your thoughts were i actually that. missed this trailer <laughs> i joined uh, okay i joined the showcase late but from what i have seen doing a bit of a catch-up it reminds me so much of skyrim um yeah tons um, which is just hilarious because like I'm sure it's not at all like I mean obviously there's there's overlap in themes and 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 um but it's just funny because coming from uh, Xbox who now own both it is a bit like whoa <laughs> it's it's a little, yeah. little bit similar to that other game you guys own um so I, I don't know it's I'm I'm hoping it's really good I know there's a lot of hype you know from that initial reveal trailer it's like oh my god Obsidian mm, making mm. this game holy shit. To now I think because people... especially then, like people were like, oh, Microsoft's making a Skyrim, and they didn't own Bethesda <laughs> then, so it was like, oh, <laughs> just actually wild. And so there was a miscommunication. Someone in Microsoft yeah. <laughs> saw that comment going, oh, you know what? We're gonna buy Skyrim. And like, Damn it, <laughs> I'll Francis. show you. We I'll still, show you. We're making a vow. <laughs> it's the same game. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's. Um, I, I hope it's good. Um, game. I hope game. it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it it could be cool. Like Obsidian has made one of my favorite RPGs ever in Fallout New Vegas. So like mm. they know how to make first person RPGs for sure. And, you know, they've done a lot with Pillars of Eternity, you know, which is more in the vein of like a Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but they've been building complex RPGs for a very long time now. So And more, more yeah, recently, we'll see. in a completely left field game, they did Grounded. Um, oh, right. Yeah, I keep forgetting that they did that. Yeah. Who, no, I'm getting them completely mixed up. Who did? Um, oh God, I've gone blank on that bloody game now. The one that came out, oh, it's the end of last year, the year before. The it was Obsidian. The the pen, the the RT one. The story. Uh, pen, 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 Oh my God! So it was I Obsidian. Just, it was yeah. Obsidian. Okay, so they've they've done yeah. a couple other games. Um, yeah, recent, and they've, they've which is kind of cool. They yeah. they've allowed pockets of their studio to be turned into these like small strike teams for smaller games which yeah. i think keeps the studio going you know especially keeps people happy as well because they feel they can still be creative um yeah. even if they're not keen on working like on a big game yeah uh, so to speak so i just yeah, could not think cool. could not think of pentiment it was like <laughs> pen ultimate <laughs> pen ultimate i mean close close that's not it i knew there was pen now, what did we see next? Was it uh, Old Hellblade? Oh, so, sorry, Avowed is out in oh. fall of this year. Fall, so yeah. that's like August, September time, mm. yeah. Uh, Hellblade um, 2 finally got a release date as well after many, many, many years of not having one. It is coming out on May 21st, I think. That's correct, yeah. Um, I'm very keen for this game. I played Hellblade maybe five six years after no wait that maybe that's too long but i played it a long time after its initial release really enjoyed it and yeah keen to see where they take the sequel it looks visually gorgeous 
Yeah, it um, looks absolutely it's... stunning. Like, what a visual showcase this is looking mm. like for the Xbox. Um, uh, it is interesting. I mean, not in a bad way, but this is going to be a, a similarly like shorter narrative led experience. So mm. they say around the same length as the first game, which was what six to seven hours. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but what caught my attention was that they said they'd re uh redesigned the combat from the mm. ground up to be a far more visceral and hard hitting experience so yeah i guess if you didn't vibe with the combat in the first game which to be fair was not the full focus of that game mm. um there is seemingly a bigger emphasis on that this time around yeah so. nice no that yeah. it looks really cool i'm glad we got a release date because again this is a game that was teased even before the series <laughs> x came out so it's about time the this, actual this lifetime came out, ago yeah. Um, so yeah. that's coming out and then after this we got uh, what was it oh, this is I think a, it was Oxide oh, is this, Games is this, oh no this Visions, of, Visions Manor. of Manor okay. cool. there's, there's lots of that in somewhere and then yeah this is Oxide Games uh, is it Ara and History Untold yeah Ara sorry. so uh, Oxide Games is made up of veteran um, civilization Supplies, devs uh, Devs, yeah. And um, you can definitely tell because this looks like civilization, like yeah. through and through. Um, I, I remember I was watching this while on the GameSpot Slack and people who are really into civilization there were like, all of these things that they're claiming are like new mechanics are all just things they're renaming from Civ. Like <laughs> mechanically, this is all the exact same well, thing. So well, one yeah. thing they said, which I thought was interesting, and I'm hoping you can correct me if I'm wrong, Civ is turn based, right? Like I take my turn, you take your turn. Or yeah, it's like four X. Yeah, because turn-based. one thing they said, which immediately made me go like, oh, okay, that's different. Is that uh, turns happen simultaneously? If that makes sense, so it's like you and I will both do something, and then like it'll action the turn. It happens at the same time. It's not like you waiting for me to do something. We both make moves and then the next turn happens we both make our next move if that makes sense i think that does happen in civ does as it well. happen in server as well because I, yeah. I saw that i, was I think like, it's turn based in like your decision making but uh, the way it plays okay. out is sometimes like okay simultaneously because yeah. i thought oh okay that that seems different i don't know how it works but i okay so yeah i i mean i have a very very limited knowledge of civ i only played a little few campaigns in varsity with friends like over days but yeah if I recall correctly, that was a thing that happened as okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, again, this is a uh, this particular genre is is something I have very little experience in. So do not take my yeah. word or insights <laughs> too hard. Yeah. Uh, that's also coming out in the fall of this year. Yeah. Um, and then mm-hmm. the big final game um, was. Indiana Jones, Machine Games, Indiana Jones. So these are the developers behind Wolfenstein. Um, and surprise, they're making a first person Indiana mm. Jones, um, with, which is with the likeness super interesting to of me. Harrison Ford, which is also also interesting, very surprising yeah. to me because I, I I couldn't. I was thinking before the showcase, they had like, had we actually seen a character model? And I don't think we had. And then it showed Harrison Ford. I was like, oh. Okay. Yeah. This dude's making bank on this character. <laughs> I guess or, it makes sense given that this game is supposed to sit between two of the films, Raiders of the Last Ark and The mm, Last Crusade. Yeah. As opposed to, I, I thought the, the even, avenue that goes like whole new sort of timeline. Like a reboot, for Indy. yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I, I think, you know, first person view looks really cool. Like seeing mm. Indy use his whip and you you... There's a lot of like stealth focus gameplay. Um, and you've got like you can use things around the environment to distract enemies. You can use your whip to, you know, pull them mm. towards you. You've got a gun. Uh, but then there's also moments where it pulls into third person, like when you're climbing. Yeah. Um, or taking like zip lines. So that's pretty interesting as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It- I-, I think it looks fun. I think it looks like very uncharted like um a hundred percent that's exactly what i said to lensk i mean so for those of you who don't know it's it is called indiana jones and the great circle which is yeah, arguably bad the blandest name you could give <laughs> and in, anything attached to indiana jones but it is funny that um from a gaming point of view we've we've now arrived at a point where 
we've got an Indiana Jones Indiana Jones game that is decided against third person for a first person, and uh, that's my immediate thoughts as well. It's, it's first person Uncharted and Tomb Raider. Um, mm. Call it what it is. Mm. Uh, that's exactly you. You solving puzzles in tombs, hunting for treasure from a first po- first person point of view. Um, I, I'm yeah. keen to play it. Like this is this is the perfect example of why Game Pass works because I can tell you I probably I like Indiana Jones, but I wouldn't rush out to buy this day one. But the fact that it's yeah, on same. Game Pass, a hundred percent, I'll try it. I'll play it. Yeah, um, I, I I'm don't not know. the biggest like Indiana Jones person. But Listen, like, we I... will not talk about you having not seen any of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I completely get where you learn. Uh, for those who don't know, Alessandro con- confessed this um, <laughs> uh, on on our Discord. Never, this week. never and watched any good of the God, films. Good God, it made them. so many people off. I, w- I will say, so many tri- triggered by me saying that when we were watching the showcase, Lenska asked if this is like a male Tomb Raider. And I was like, listen, <laughs> Indiana Jones came along before Lara Croft. Okay, don't, don't fair be, play. Don't be saying things like this. <laughs> uh, and that's fair was, play. I was just like, hang on. Have you not seen Indiana Jones? No, it's like, oh, what a way for the marriage to end. Am I right? <laughs> just like that. You're like, We've got a couch, we've got a TV, sit down. <laughs> Listen, we're going to watch all of these. Uh, look, I think, I think Microsoft are doing all the right things. Um, they've, they've shown four big games, including a third-party game coming out to their consoles this year. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's funny because it seems not all these games aren't going to appeal to everyone. Like, it's the reality. You, yeah. You might have watched a showcase and be like, oh, my God, like, this is all bullshit. And that's fine. But... I still think it's good of Microsoft to be like, here's a roadmap. Uh, you've got these four big games, Game Pass, Day One, and it won't be the only games they release. Like there will, I'm sure there will be more updates throughout the year. Mm. Oh, I sincerely hope so. Maybe I'm speaking rubbish. I um, just think the worst thing they could do is like set this up as like, these are the games for 2024 and then like two of them get delayed to 2024. Oh yeah. No, um, listen, yeah. Phil Spencer, do not do that. Um, yeah. I, I, I they, do, they have to deliver. I do have to think that come... I mean, I know E3 is dead, but come June, there is an update on another game or two that maybe come out. Yeah, this probably. Year. I would expect, I highly doubt this is like Xbox being like, cool, this is what we got this year. Enjoy. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain there's, there's something like, you know, we've been hearing so much about a new Gears. Mm. Um, you know, Coalition hasn't put out anything in no. a stupidly long time. Mm. Um, so stuff like that, you know, uh, a new Forza will almost certainly be announced for this year. So mm-hmm. maybe even Fable. Fable, yeah. Fable's kicking around there somewhere. Um, yeah. Cool. So that was that news. In other news this week, uh, what do you want to move? To? Oh, let's just touch on this quickly. To nobody's surprise, hundreds of deve- developers say they're working on the Nintendo Switch 2. Um, I, mm. I had a quick look at this article. This came from the game, GDC. yeah, GDC, where three thousand people were polled, and two hundred forty of those people said that they are developing for the Nintendo Switch Two, uh, which is I don't know, like just under ten percent. So not surprising, really, but very exciting nonetheless. Um, the Switch, Switch originally launched in twenty fifteen. It's been, you know, it's going on nine years now. It's long overdue for nintendo to release not long overdue but wait did you it, did you say nine years it came wait not 2015 sorry i'm speaking rubbish 2017 no, it is. It's, 20, it's 2017 sorry still seven years is a long time to have the old faithful switch i don't know where i got 2015 from i'm sorry yeah i'm not I was, either. <laughs> I was i was so i said it with such authority that no one would dare doubt me and then you're like listen <laughs> I'll I I not have I incorrect to, facts. I need yeah. to rein you in here. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm very keen to see what the Switch 2 is, and it should be out if rumors and trends. I, and I would be true. shocked if this thing's not announced by March. Yeah. Like, was, I'm almost if, certain <laughs> this is a if teased we don't get or at a, least like, yeah. If we don't get a sequel to, I can't remember her name, but the original lady in the first Switch uh, announcements. The Karen. Was the, was on, it? on the... To yeah, don't wasn't it Karen? Is, was it Karen? Yeah. Karen who, who took, who took switch the Switch to the party. To the party. Man, if I don't get a yeah. sequel to that, where Karen takes her Switch 2 to a party, then... That, that trailer, that trailer is an all-time fantastic trailer. It's it just... so good. So good at, like... 
because that ultimately was a teaser trailer. We didn't, yeah. Nintendo only like broke open what the Switch did like a few months later in January. That yes. came out in like October. But that one and a half minute trailer sold the exact scenario that a Switch would work. It's like, it's a hybrid console. Mm. You pop it into this little dock and it shows up on your screen. You take it out and you've got your game. You can play with it in the park. You can take the control. It told you everything about the console that you needed to, to get excited about it. But also like, it, it wasn't just like a, yeah, we're working on a new console. We'll tell you more about it in four months. And then you're just sitting there like, oh God, okay, well, we haven't seen anything. So I'm hoping the new Switch teaser is Does that. similar. But also so interesting, I'm pretty sure it will be. reflecting back now from a modern point of view of the Switch, kind of just established the whole handheld trend. We've got the Steam Deck yeah, now, absolutely. the Switch Rock, and I think a lot of hardware companies going, oh damn, there's a hunger for this thing. So. I mean, the, 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 I still recall seeing that guy. He was playing Breath of the Wild, obviously, like in a park, and he, walk, mm. he walks home. He gets home, he just slots it in, and he's playing it on his TV. And that like little like light bulb moment in the brain is like, okay, mm. I understand what this thing is I, and why this thing is so cool. It was such a weird thing because I think at the time it was also the comparison of, you know, it, we had, what, the, the Wii U and then uh, the DS, the 3DS at the time. Yeah. And I think it is just this weird disconnect of no a handhold just cannot be as powerful as a home console. And, exactly. And to yeah. be fair, the Switch is not a powerful console. However, what they've done with this is made they've they've just blurred those lines. And I think mm. that's why that that dream they sort of like, holy shit, you can have a home console on the go and then they actually delivered on it. It just yeah. It's I think it was a generational leap because Breath of the Wild was for the yes, Wii, well, Wii U, Wii as you well. know, and there was like, no, you can take that exact experience on the go mm. now. And that's like a big, like mind blown sort yeah. of moment, you know. It's weird looking back now, like, well, of course you can do that. I mean, we've got the Steam Deck, like the Steam yeah. Deck. <laughs> but at the time it was like, oh my God, that is unreal. Uh, very excited to see what they've got lined up. And I, I wouldn't say no to, you know, some uh, tastier Nintendo graphics. Um, I suppose, should we bounce to the other thing you and I both really want this year. Uh, Elden Ring Steam Elden DLC Rang. update suggests from software reading for Shadow of the Earth Tree announcement. Um, just yeah, so this is a weird one from this week because like, you know, very late last year from software said that the, the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC wouldn't get an, like a significant update at the end of the year because everyone's expecting it to pop up at Keeley's Game Awards. Mm. Um, and I that, thought it'd you know, be there for sure. Yeah, I thought it would be there until Promsoft came out and basically were like, yeah, it's progressing smoothly, but that's all they have to say. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, this is probably still a year away. But now uh, the Steam listing for the game um, has received a new DLC listing as part of an update. There's nothing that's on the listing, but the fact that the game was updated to have a DLC category amended to its Steam DB um, entry is interesting um yeah there's been a lot of further speculation that it is being planned for release in february to align with the game's two-year anniversary please so from Sophie, don't that, do this feb's too busy now that that <laughs> the you know when people just say that out loud you're like okay well you can guess that and you yeah. know probably wrong but recall that last year uh thrustmaster the peripherals maker they said that they would have a batch of their new controllers arriving in February with, quote, uh, to, quote, sync with the new Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion release. And they said that out of context oh. months ago. Oh, my God. Well, there we so go. I, you know, this, this combined with the sudden, like, DB change and it, it's looking like something could happen. Who knows? Um, there's also these weird... I don't know if they're weird, but I've heard them mention now in a few places reports that this might actually not be the only expansion for the game, that there is a second one actually being worked on for Good later God. down the line. Well, so yeah. Didn't Dark Souls 3 have two DLCs, or am I imagining? I don't know. The I think Dark Souls 2 had two. I feel like the, they have had games that have had multiple they have. DLCs. It but just, it, it also depends that the the extent is, you know, those those expansions 
were relatively small. I feel like Bloodborne's is quite significant. Mm. And Dark Souls 3 was quite significant. This one apparently is a whole new island mm. uh, that is being added to the map. So I think this is going to be huge in Listen, comparison to, to just the previous ones. Give so. me the DLC. <laughs> just I, I, I'll I'll consume that DLC. I love Alden Ring. I know you do too. And I, there are millions mm-hmm. of other pe- people who are just j- jonesing at the, you know, can't wait content. to hear that title screen music again. Oh my gosh. Boom. Mm. It's, it's too iconic. Yeah. So um, shivers. Uh, and then you hear that music again when you fight the final boss. God. Too good. It's a top God. 10 gaming moment. Yeah, oh, um, top 10. In other news, Street Fighter 6 is chugging along nicely. Uh, if you enjoy Capcom's Fighter, there's a new character named Ed launching in Feb. Sorry, who- that's Dante. It's 100% Dante. Uh, Dante's somebody... Dante from Devil May Cry somebody is joining cosplaying, Street Fighter 6. Ed cosplaying as Dante. Apparently, this is an existing character. I thought it was a brand new character, but Ed is... Uh, I don't know when he was launched, but coming... Well, I don't know when he was added to the Street Fighter franchise as a whole, but he is coming soon i think i don't know if there's actually a date i really do like this trailer description that's been trans uh, transcribed yet ed the psycho powered bad boy of boxing (laughs) brackets with a heart heart, (laughs) is almost ready to show you he's the true high def picture of strength okay the fuck does that mean calm down what does that mean is he the 4k of strength He's, yeah, he's the high, not the high. He's definition. the 8K of he's strength. The 8K of strength. So that's cool. I know Jeff and Umar are very excited. But for he's this. got a heart. Don't he's, forget he's about it. He's got a heart in brackets. No. He's, you know, he's not <laughs> only brackets. not only is he 8K, he's got HDR as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make heart. this up. <laughs> heart. Um, definition, realism. I don't know. Fuck. Love to see it. Uh, then in other news, Power World, we're gonna to get to Power World. Okay, so I populated the news yesterday, um, yesterday evening, and this was the news article that I saw at the time. Power World is currently Steam's best-selling game, passes three hundred and fifty thousand concurrent users. Okay, then look at the time here. This is eight seventeen a.m. PST. Then. Not even an hour and a bit later, Paul Wald has sold, and I know they're two different things. One is concurrent players and one is copy sold, but still, Paul Wald has sold over a million copies and its servers can't keep up. So for those of you That's who don't know- That's kind of insane when you consider it's on Game Pass. Yeah, it's on Game Pass as well. Uh, mm. Paul Wald, for those of you who don't know, is basically a, a, a look, Game Pass Pokemon with guns. but it's a Pokemon clone- with guns and that if you watch it's a trailer, MMO, so. yeah if, if you watch a trailer you'll be like oh my god this is pokemon with guns it doesn't play like a pokemon necessarily um this game has the most bonkers trailers and now that it's out for people to finally play and good god people are loving it people have snapped it up people are playing it yeah i, I, I haven't seen any gameplay myself I, but people who are playing it are enjoying it people i know i kind of want to try it out now mm-hmm. like it's not just a dumb thing you know what i mean i just i kind of want to i i've seen anecdotally like people being like this has got actually some really cool interesting spins on pokemon combat and stuff Mm. like that like then it's it's not just an ironically reaching these numbers it seems to actually be yeah earning this you know so i wanted to ask (laughs) is this a full release it's not uh, an early access no it's thing. it's an early access if okay. i'm not mistaken yeah because i was let me sure. let me just double check on steam because on 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 oh, xbox yeah. it says game preview the, yeah the game is currently in steam early access and xbox game preview yeah. okay that is hilarious yeah, there, there, <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of poor reporting around that because it was a lot of headlines being like power world is out on this day and it's like going into 1.0 and it's like no that's not at no, all that's why i was confused because i thought it was yeah. early access so that's cool is on game pass uh i'd like to try this um maybe maybe one day oh, i'll give it a try uh and then last piece of news until dawn movie in the works from annabelle a creation director and writer uh, it's this- a hard note from me this is very strange given that, okay, so those you don't know, Until Dawn is a 
narrative horror game with actual actors and actresses where you basically play through a horror story and you make decisions, you know, and you, you watch things unfold. What, what happens in the movie now? There's going to be a definitive story. Yeah. Do they use the same actors and actresses? Like, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's just weird because we're clearly seeing this trend now of, hey, video game movies make money. Let's make every damn video game into a movie. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that is literally what's happening now. Mm. I've, I, there's so many movies being announced. Mm. Um, there was another one this week. It was until you Dawn mentioned one. There was another horror game, something Martha. Um, it was like an indie horror game that That's not made a lot of... Yeah, made a lot of buzz because it was like very um, hectic. I don't know. It's had some like hectic scenes or moments, but it was actually like not a great game. Now it's also being made into a movie. So wild. Yeah. Uh, Martha is dead, I think. Also, um, just want to point out, uh, this is Sony Pictures, Sony Art here, just making everything. So we there's actually a list here. Um, I mean, this is stuff that's come out. We have The Last of Us, the Twisted Metal series for Peacock, and then they are still making the God of War and Horizon TV shows. I think it was... I forgetting those are coming, yeah. Yeah, but I think it was um, The Last of Us. The Horizon one, I think, is actually further along than God of War. Oh, really? Mistaken. But I, yeah. I, th I think the, the Last of Us show is the one that really oh, put yeah. it on the map for a lot of people because then, I mean... Even saying that, like, I think The Witcher did the same thing a few years prior of, hey, there's a Witcher mm. Netflix show, and people go, oh, my God, this is based on a game. I'm going to buy the game. The Last of Us show was one for one. Hey, this is the game in yeah, the series. Absolutely. And people watched the series and went, oh, my God, I can play through this. <laughs> yeah. So there's clearly a thing I, there of, yeah. I do think that uh, Horizon is going to have a much tougher chance with that oh, sort 100%. of... Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I, I think God of War is probably the next best bet. Like, people yeah, love I, mythologies and, like, hard-hitting stories. Horizon is just, like, yo, robots. But, but even from... It's, I think, more from a story point of view, it makes sense, right? Like, The Last of Us is this very compelling narrative. God of War is this... You know, oh my God, it's, yes, it's an action game, but there's this compelling narrative about Kratos and Atreus. Horizon, not to say that there's not a good narrative, but it's an open world and it feels, I don't know mm. how that's going to translate um, into a show. Like, I just don't see. Yeah, I, think, I, I really don't see that um, working. I think, I think well, visually, I mean. give, like, I don't know, in terms of budget and whatever, what they've got, but if they could make it look good and make the world interesting to watch, then... Yeah, maybe. But it's I think that's also the the most challenging thing is like that world is so <laughs> fascinating to me because of the intersection of this like tribalism and technology. Yes. That you know, there's so many variations of that. Like bringing that to TV, I think first it would just be super expensive. Also, and yeah, be best looking, arguably one of the best looking games on the PlayStation. But yeah, I don't know. It, how that looks in real life it could just be a, like a cg mess like <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly it could be so i, I don't so, know we'll, yeah. we'll see though those vibrant colors pop on my beautiful screen in game Oof. don't know how they're gonna pop irl <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so a fair bit of news this week but that is all of the news do you think they should just get laura bailey to play aloy in real life it is yes. laura bailey right i think it's yeah uh is it not ashley Birch. Oh, it's Ashley Birch. Sorry, yeah. you're you're right. Laura Bailey is Abby. Yeah. In Last of Us, yeah. It's it's funny because I don't know if you've ever watched the Apple TV series Mythic Quest. No, but I um, think Ashley Birch is, is in there. there as like she's like a game <laughs> tester in there, and every she's, time she talks, I just hear Aloy. Aloy. <laughs> yeah, she's very good in that series. That's so. amazing. Um, yeah, that's news, which means we are now moving on to questions. Uh, yeah, if you want to send us questions, you can email us. At, e oh, wow. Email us, checkpointchatpodcast at gmail.com, or you can find us on social media at Checkpoint Chat. I will say um, that we are. Do we have questions? We do have a question. I will say. Okay. You always we, hide this from me, so I never know. <laughs> I like, like to catch off guard. We do have <laughs> a Threads account as well. So if you're not on Twitter. Oh, right. The big yeah, old X. Threads. I have made a Threads account if you'd rather engage with us. At Checkpoint there. Chat on Threads. Yeah, if you hate X or Twitter or whatever. 
And do you know, I got locked out of my Twitter account for like two days this week. I couldn't fucking believe it. For what? I, so when they, when they removed the SMS, like two factor authentication, I had to sign up with normal 2FA, which is like totally fine. Yeah. But I forgot that during the sign up process, if you're doing it on a phone, I don't know why Twitter is like the only app I've ever interacted with that does this. It actually launches into the Apple like keychain two factor authentication. Yeah. Um, and doesn't it allow you to use like Google authenticators, w- which is what I use for like every two factor thing on earth. So I think at the time I was just like, I don't know how to get around this. I'm just going to use this to, you know, link it to my account. So when I was using a new browser at work, I um, tried to log in and my 2FA code wasn't working because I also had a 2FA code on Google Authenticator, which is super strange. Oh. So then I thought, okay, Twitter's just like shit the bed and my 2FA is broken. Yeah. I need to email support. Email to support, no response for two days. I still actually haven't got a response. I sent one oh. on Monday. So if you ever lose access to your Twitter account through this method, you are boned, like absolutely <laughs> Like, do not Straight depend up. on their support to get back to your bone. I then just like, I reset my password. I did this and that. What I then tried to do was, uh, what what did I try to do? Um, oh, I found, I managed to find that I had a backup code for my 2FA stored away somewhere. So I was able to regain access to my account. But then obviously it deactivated my 2FA, so I wanted to re-add it. And that's when I saw it went back to the Apple keychain one. And I was like, oh, right. It did this last time. I forgot about this. Um, so you got access back at least. I got access back, but yeah. Fact of the matter is, like, if you ever lose two factor access, you are fucked. Twitter support is so shit let that, that they will just. Well, it's been a week. I haven't got no contact, and let, I'm pretty sure I will never get contact. Let that be a lesson. Just do not use two FA. Two. <laughs> um, don't do that. Please do not take that as advice. That is terrible advice. Please have 2FA on your Always consoles, have, on your devices. Please, 2FA on everything. It was a joke. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Have 2FA on your front door. <laughs> oh, my God. What did that even, what did that even entail? R- rob your front it's door. It's just a second lock. <laughs> that, you know, that, you know that, little, that little keychain that people slide across? Oh, that's, like the little, that's their 2FA. I was thinking yeah. more, I arrive home, put my key in. It sends an email to me that I have to approve. <laughs> oh, my God. That is probably a thing with some fucking dumb smart lock. I bet 100%. you. hundred percent. I bet you that's a thing. Good God. Uh, cool. So we have a question from good guy at Jared Bra Bra. He says, Bra Bra. Hope you guys have a wonderful and prosperous new year ahead. Um, oh, to you very, too. Very kind of you, you too. Then the question, is Matty excited to dedicate more of his life to learning and speed running Elden Ring's Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC? Wow, but, how fortuitous uh, that this question <laughs> came up this week. Oh, what a weird coincidence. Maybe Jared <laughs> Brock <Brock laughs> knows that it's coming out next month. Blink, yeah, blink he, once he, if he, it he. is, just tell us. <laughs> um, I actually had this thought... Maybe it was towards the end of last year where it just dawned on me oh, that... No. What? <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, I thought you were going to say to like play through the oh, game again. Oh, no, no, no. No, I was more just surprised that I hadn't played the game. I don't think I touched it once last uh, year. okay. Like not even a matter of jumping in just to run around. I think I consumed so much Elden Ring uh, in 2022, the year it launched. And for those of you wondering what Jared's talking about, I did learn to speed run the game. I wasn't particularly good at it. It's still, I think my best time was still around three hours, which I'll say it's not bad, but when people are out there getting it in like an hour, I mean, my time's terrible by comparison. Uh, but that that was a whole, it gave me a whole, I mean, I've always had respect for speedrunners. Don't get me wrong. Like I love watching. We didn't actually touch on that. GDQ was this week. Um, maybe. Yes, yes. But um, there's a bunch of cool runs. There's one where a run is played by a dog. Best, um, best dog there was one I saw on my YouTube today, which was a no damage run of Resident, Resident Evil, Evil yeah. Mm. yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. So this is the best time that you can go watch after all the fact, of, all, the, yeah. all the good, good so ones. Yeah. I, I love watching GDQ and I always have had respect for speedrunners, but I, I've never myself learned how to speedrun a game. So I thought, let me try Elden Ring. And whew, that is a process. I had to sit and actually learn, which all the speedrunners have to do. What is the optimal way, the optimal thing to do? How do you level up? What boss do you, how do you, what order do you fight the bosses? Where do you go? Which paths do you take? 
Um, and it was a lot of fun. Like I really enjoyed doing that. What's sad though is that I'm sure by now, A, the strategies have changed because it's, it's been about yeah. a year. So someone inevitably has discovered a different build or something's been nerfed or there's a new glitch or something. And B, I can't for the life of me remember how to do the default speed run. Like if, if you said, sat me down and I said, you have to do it, uh, I'd have a vague idea, but I <laughs> can't. Guns your head, speed run this game in three hours. <laughs> but I, I can't tell you what the order was. Like where do I go first? How do I level? I've, that, all that information's gone. Um, I remember you walking, well, not walking me through, but like explaining to me the sort of steps you were going through mm. with that a while ago. And it seemed like quite intricate. So I can see how not practicing, you know, uh, consistently with that, like you would just, you would just forget. Just forget, you know? yeah. All that said, with Shadow of the Erdring DLC happening, uh, this, well, it has to be this year, surely. I'm not going to do... Like, I'm sure they'll allow players to just pick up the existing character and dive into the DLC because unlike previous From games um, where you finished the game and that was it, you rolled credits, that was that, new game plus, in Elden Ring you can actually just pick up after the last boss and carry on exploring the world. So Mm -hmm. that's quite cool. I might just pick up one of my many characters and just go straight to the DLC. Very excited for that though. Can't wait. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Cool. And that is <clears throat> all the questions this week. I don't have. I sure. Don't think Look at that. Anything else anywhere? Sure. Thank you, Jared, for that question. If you want to send us questions, you too can email us at checkpointchatpodcast.gmail.com or you can find us uh, on a bunch of social media sites Instagram, Threads, X, if you're not locked out, at <laughs> Checkpoint Chat. All of the places. Mm-hmm. All of the places. Um, and that has been episode two, what? 246. That's correct. Two, yeah. Four, of Checkpoint six. Chat. Um, mm-hmm. As always, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate all of the support and we'll be back as next always week. next week. Same time, same place. Bye. We'll see you then. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>